Before we get into today's video, some regulatory compliance. My name is Andrew Alexander. I am Head of Investments for Three Counties, an independent financial advisor based in County Durham, England. This video is for anyone who has an interest in investing and investment markets, both retail clients with no experience of investing through to industry professionals who invest for themselves and their clients. As independent financial advisors and wealth managers, there is no commercial relationship between ourselves and today's guest. The purpose of this video is educational and in no way should any of the content be construed as advice, nor is it an enticement to invest. Past performance is not a guide to future performance, nor a reliable indicator of future results or performance. The value of investments may go down as well as up and is not guaranteed. Therefore, investors may not get back the amount originally invested. Now, onto the video. Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome to another of our weekly investment videos. And many thanks once again for tuning in. Yep, it's 2022, and markets have started with a bang, some certainly better than others. 2020 was all about COVID. 2021 was all about inflation. So what will be the theme of 2022, and how can investors position themselves to either protect or or benefit from the evolving scenario. Well, I'm delighted to kick off this year with friend of the channel, Hugh Gimber, global market strategist at JP Morgan, who will give us his view, their view, on the year ahead, and I cannot wait to hear it. But first, before we get into the content, as ever, if you haven't subscribed already, and there are some of you out there that haven't, ridiculously so, please press that red subscribe button. It really does assist us in delivering the regular investment management and financial planning content uh, through the channel. So, onto the content itself. Hugh, many thanks for tuning in, um, attending today. It's, it's absolutely great to see you. Um, like I said, 2022 started off with a bit of a bang. Um, what's been happening? Well, first of all, thanks for having me back. It's a great way to start the year. And as you say, there is a huge amount going on in markets in just the first few days that we've had so far. Mm -hmm. So I think the big topic for markets so far has really been the central banks. Mm -hmm because we've seen a shift in the central banks in the way that they're thinking about inflation. And that is starting to accelerate the pace at which they plan to tighten monetary policy this year. Mm -hmm. So you go back four or five months, the message from the central banks was, we're going to be extremely patient. We think inflation is largely transitory and therefore we can just sit back and watch for all of this to wash out of the data. And that has changed over the past few weeks. They, I think, now are realizing that they're behind the curve. They're realizing that the inflationary pressures are more broad-based, frankly, larger and more persistent than they previously expected. And so they're now starting to guide the markets towards a quicker pace of rate hikes and also thinking about how to either end asset purchases in the case of the Fed or perhaps even start to think about reducing the size of the balance sheet later this year. Yeah. Um I don't want to be blase about things. We've we've just had a, a, a chat about it, but the last two years has is, is, is pretty much been dominated. The markets have been dominated by by COVID and the pandemic spreading globally and the different variants that have been been coming out. With regards to to the market specifically, and and, and let's leave society at one side. Um, has this threat largely gone now? I think it's fair to say that the markets are definitely looking through the risk of Omicron. Now, clearly, at the margin, some of the data that we've had just over the past few days is starting to look a little bit more encouraging. But clearly, as we've all learned with the pandemic, trying to make long forecasts about where this is headed is a, is a really silly thing to do. Uh -huh. The most important thing for markets is that when you look at how growth is going to play out over the course of 2022, uh -huh. the view, I think, rightly, is that if you get weaker spending or weaker activity now, it simply means stronger spending or stronger activity later out. Yeah. I think Omicron is shifting the timing of the return to something more normal and shifting the, re uh, the timing of that return to growth, but it's not destroying demand. It's just delaying demand further out this year. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting thing. Uh, you know, to, uh, 
point point to make with regards to the the, the, the fluctuating effect that it has has on the market. And and, and then going back to the the more hawkish tone uh, of the Fed, um, if that's going to be the main driver of of opportunities uh, for 2022, and I, I, I agree, I think it will be. How should investors be be positioned and, and, and looking at their allocation? Because uh, you know, would I be right in saying that we're we're kind of going from one world to to a completely different world now yeah i think that's fair you're going from a world last year where developed market central banks were still very easy with policy to a world this year where central banks are going to be tightening policy and so that has implications both for fixed income markets and for equity markets uh-huh. in fixed income the key message is that we think government bond yields will rise further over the course of this year I think you're going to be looking at still a very challenging environment for long only fixed income investors and potentially another year of negative returns from global government bonds. Mm -hmm. So I think within fixed income, you need flexibility. You need to be looking at credit as well as government bonds. And you need to be thinking about a global approach to fixed income, not just relying on UK gilts or US treasuries. Mm -hmm. In equities, equities we think are going to keep taking their cues from the bond market in terms of the leadership of different sectors. So we've shown before in a rising yield environment, the one we think we'll be in for much of this year, Mm -hmm. you typically see sectors like the banks, like energy, like the industrial companies faring better. And you typically see more of the kind of bond proxy or defensive type sectors such as utilities or consumer staples faring a bit worse and also some of the more growthy names in, say, the tech sector. It's exactly what we've seen playing out so far in terms of market leadership, and we think that trend could continue. So at this point, it seems like it's a good opportunity to be rebalancing portfolios away from the growth leadership of recent years and bringing at least a bit more value back into equity allocations. Yeah, absolutely. And and if we just look at the last, what, six weeks, we've seen the resurgence of, of UK equities, which um, anecdotally, I was talking to a UK equity manager just before Christmas, and the first question was, do you actually allocate to the UK? Which I was dumbfounded with, with, with being asked, you know, being a UK investor, people have, have, have fled the UK uh, market essentially for, for, for the real... Uh, um, you know, a powerhouse of, of large cap tech in the US, and we've seen that kind of rotate. Let's let's see if it continues through this year. Could be could be interesting. Anyway, Hugh, it's been magic once again to uh, to speak to you. Um, really, really interesting. It'll be and and really exciting to see how this year pans out. Um, we'll catch up soon. You stay safe because again, the the coronavirus is still about there. And uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon. Cheers. Thanks, Andrew.